I like uh, final nines and skins after tournaments. Uh, not necessarily part of tournaments, you know, because the stress can kind of get you a little bit, but I love playing in front of the crowd. Uh, so generally, I really enjoy final nines and skins matches. I anticipate having some fun tomorrow and hopefully put some money back. Go out there and get them. Thanks, bye. All right, here with Marka Johansson just before the North Carolina skins match. You got some uh, pretty big competition. You got Paul McBeth, Barry Schultz, Nate Sexton. What's the strategy to get the most cash in those guys? Oh, uh, just try to make them work <laughs> as best you can. I don't know. I don't know the course very well, so it's just pretty much going to be play and see if you can make them work and push for it and have some fun. Are you playing it blind? Uh, pretty much so. I'll drive it here in a little bit, but I haven't played it. So you're playing just for the hole, so it doesn't matter what you score beyond. If someone beats you and you're done, it doesn't matter. And the skins can carry over if two people tie. So you're just playing for a hole. You're not playing for your overall stroke total. So you can win a hole with a double bogey versus, you know, a birdie. It doesn't matter. It's whatever is the lowest score on the hole can win the skins. Say you tie, you get a, a skins carry over one hole, two hole, three holes. That money just starts to really add up. I mean, does okay. that? That puts the pressure on you want to just get past those guys, right? Uh, well, you can't really think of it that way. you got to think of it more like you do in like a poker or something. They're just chips. It's just holes you're trying to win. I'm not really thinking of this money. I'm just trying to win as many holes as I can. In addition to the skins, they're going to have some CTPs out there. Even if you don't get the hole, you might get the CTP as well. Yeah, it might add a little flavor into it. It's a fun. That's always fun. I like the idea of doing that. You're doing the uh, USTGC, I guess? Yes, sir. When are you going down to practice? Oh, probably sometime this week. I'll start going down and get a few, a few rounds in there. It's I don't know, I know it pretty well, so it's not like I have to sit there and hang out at it all the time. How'd it go for you last year? I ended up like 14th or 15th, something like that. Yeah, man, those ropes, there's something else on there. <laughs> yeah, they keep you on your toes, that's for sure. You can't stop thinking about something, you make a mistake, it, you get punished. They do tweak things from time to time. It's pretty consistent with the layout, but did you notice big changes last year? Or? Oh, they did some changes last year. They changed the way they did the hazards and the OBs and some things. They changed the way they scored them, so it was a little bit different. But I mean, they're always adding mandos. They'll change the way some OBs land or change the way it holds the play, bringing a hazard over here versus an OB and stuff like that. Hey, best of luck to you out here today. I hope you won a bunch of cash. Is this about the money or is this about uh, bragging rights? What is oh, this it? is just about fun. <laughs> just fun, all right. I enjoy it and thanks for uh, repping uh, Discraft. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm Chuck Connolly with Spike Heiser, and we are getting ready to load this case full with Justin Bradford, AKA the Colonel from Bradford Wealth Management, is the money man for the Spike Heiser North Carolina Invitational Skins Match. 50s and money is just gonna be handed out like crazy all over the place. Stay tuned and see what's gonna happen. It's all yours now, money man. Looking forward to giving all this away. Sure.
your 2014 Spike Heiser Hybrid Invitational Tournament winner, Nate Big Sexy Sexton! <laughs> up and move on. Blow the rain out, guys. We're good. Yep. Skins are pushed. One fifty now.
Nice roller. Oh boy. Out the 50. That was the third, right? Yeah, the first three. three. How many $150 putts you made, Nate Sexton? In my life? Probably a decent number, but they still feel good. Congratulations. Hey, here's how this is going to work in your case. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mine was mine was iffy, but once I made it. Thank you. And a fifty dollar second shot CTP, guys.
Yeah. Oh, bar. CTP. CTP master. Paul. Our our junior associates got your second shot. <laughs> CTP. Good, buddy. Shot, you could possibly reach the green, but. Just another second shot. I Pop. I think they give the woo when the disc is still moving. Oh, there yeah, you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Get in. Oh! oh yeah. Yeah. Oh,
six par threes.
get it. He carried it. Oh. Pushing the skin. Pushing it. The top. Pushing it. What you get to do with your last one? Your last one. Yeah, Georgia. Yeah.
throw in his hand. <laughs> nice. That's the doctor, man. I got it. Who got the CTP? Paxton. There he's doing the first hole, guys. Get him, Bear. Right. Bear, you getting that fresh tape on there? Forever. What's the skins at right now? Oh, next hole will be worth $500. 500. Uh, you know how much money you made so far? Zero. Why you gotta go there, man? Zero. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the only par three that wasn't a CTP, I had CTP, but you know. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Go on to the next hole. Try again. Well, hey, get it done. Uh, we're rooting for you. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> No, no, thirty, thirty, thirty. <laughs> <laughs> this is a one shot. Okay. Two shot CT pieces. There you go. They got more cars than cash. I don't think you deserve it. Come on now. Right. You're not getting to ride my car anymore. Oh. Money man's got to handle the big numbers. That's 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10.
Yeah, it's close. But the man with the money makes the call. The next thing after this is he's going to have to look back and touch his finger to his nose. <laughs> like that. Whoa, easy. Whoa, whoa. You are failing this sobriety check. <laughs> and, and. 16, 17, 18. By two feet, falling back, $30. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to get a single stick, a single skin. I'm just going to get a stick. You don't need it if you get a CTP. I got you, Another push. $50 second shot. It should $50 be $50 second shot. $200. And it's $200 skin. $200 skin. Yeah, Jojo. Uh, sit. Out of bounds and brick wall behind out of bounds, I believe. Good playing. Good playing, guys. Absolutely. 250. 250 plus the $30 CPC. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks, everyone who donated. Uh, Last round is really the one.
one that made all this possible. So What's the money man figured out? First every, place 100, everybody gets 50 after that. So we're going to give playoff. everybody 50. Yeah. And then the last, whoever wins the skin, the last man stands and gets another 50. So you guys want to line up for your Benjamins. And if you're not, yeah. Benjamins, you're if great. You're not, if you're not part of the push, you're out. So it's just a normal score playoff now. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, everybody goes on 14, 14 through 18 playoffs. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like Barry for a second. Yeah. Yep, there it is. There you have it. Does that close it out? $50. Woo! He gets 53! <laughs> Last three donations. One free shot. Yeah. See you in a couple weeks.
here was Paul McBeth after the skins match. How'd it go? Um, I didn't win a single skin. So, <laughs> but uh, there was only two skins once. Not winning one wasn't a bad thing. I kept getting the CTPs and things like that, and then won the final skin. I guess I won the playoff skin. I don't know exactly how much I made, but probably be like close to three, four hundred dollars. Like. Barry got the big one. Was like five hundred bucks. Yeah, so. I think that he got that, and then I got one skin. What did you think of the course? It was fun. I don't know what a good score would be um, because we were doing the skins match. I think it's a great, it's a fun layout. There's a lot of birdie opportunities out there. I think every hole is pretty much a birdie opportunity. You know, if you're throwing good drives, you birdie pretty much almost all 18 fairly easily. How much did these conditions factor in it, uh, to the way you play? They didn't actually. Um, they didn't really factor in, I don't think, for anyone really. I don't think anyone slipped um, off the drives. I don't think anyone slipped with their discs because it was, we had the golf carts too, which made it easier um, to stay dry and keep the disc dry. So it wasn't, it wasn't too bad at all. So you got uh, your big week coming up this week, uh, USCGC, super close uh, playoff last year. Yeah. You, you gonna take it down this year? What, what's your plan? Yeah, it's a goal. Play good throughout the whole week. Um, you know, I don't have to play great, great, and then average. You know, just good solid rounds. All four rounds will keep me in it. Last year, I think I had like two exceptional rounds, the first two rounds, and then just horrendous rounds the next two. Um, so I'd rather have four good rounds, four solid rounds, than you know, two exceptional ones, two not so great ones. So. Keep it consistent is the goal this year. I know uh, Jonathan Poole organized that event. You know, Innova's back in it. It's uh, it's just a great tournament. Uh, do you wish there were more uh, tournaments that had that kind of prestige and, and money and, and help just backing it like that? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, the more tournaments there are, the better. You know, the bigger events. They're a lot of fun to play. They bring out crowds. If it was possible, yeah, that'd be great. You know, if there's like some sponsors in every area that just want to sponsor a series of events or just, you know, one big one here, one big one there. Um, those are always good, the big money ones and the big, you know, the ones that really have the media attention are the, are the biggest ones that I like to play. You seem to do really well regardless of how big the crowd is. Are you conscious of that when, when it's happening? Crowds are, I mean, they're fun to play in. You know, it kind of gives you something to show off for and play well for. It. But I'm not really conscious about them. Like, I don't think about them. Usually, I don't know how big they are because you can only see the front row of the crowd until you see, like, camera angles and things like that. You're like, wow, that was 40 people deep. Um, so can't really tell how big they are when you're playing uh, in the event. You can just see the first row or maybe first, second row. So I don't really notice them too much. So you got your McPro AVR, you got your Rock, and your Crate. Is that uh, all of your signature discs? Currently, right now, there's the Champion Rock 3, McPro Rock 3, McPro AVR, the Nova, um, the Crate. The G the, there was the G Star Crate and then moved to Champion Crate. And uh, I think. This Mania S line P2 and Thunderbird. Thunderbird. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, the big boy, the new one. I think that's seven. Somebody told me that you threw a uh, Roadrunner in the bag. You, you changed it up? I've always had, like, I mean, there's discs that'll come in and out due to the tournament. Um, USDGC requires a lot of rollers. So, like, each year I always have a Roadrunner in there. So, I wouldn't say it's new. I've had it, I've had them in there before. Just like a crate comes in and out of my bag because it is just one of those discs, like, you don't get to throw it on every course. I usually design my bag for the course that I'm about to play. So, a Roadrunner, definitely for, like, hole two off the tee and things like that where I need a low roller or something to get down quick that'll turn and finish right. Uh, because I do have T-Bird and Destroyer that I roll as well, but usually they don't finish right, which is what I need. So, Roadrunner, um, not really a surprise to my bag but it's not really used for air shots. And you like the star for a little more more grip, or are you doing champ? Or? I have both right now. I don't know which one I'll have. Whichever one's working best, you know, for the shots that I need out on the course. It does seem like, number two, a lot of people like that roller shot I mean, to get up the yeah, hill. Definitely. Uh, it's got that low ceiling. Um, I think they might have a new OB rule this year or something. I don't, I don't know. I haven't gotten down there yet. I'll find out what it looks like tomorrow. Um, so but we'll see. We'll see You know, if I'm throwing that roller or an air shot, depending on how I need my second shot to be, um, you know, placement that I'll need. So last year, Johnny McRae had just a huge lead going into what, a hole 17? Yeah. And what were you thinking when you were walking to that, it's a pretty long walk to, over to uh, 17's tee. Uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's in the bag, and then yeah. with what happened, I mean, what, were you, what was going through your mind? I honestly thought I was playing for second at that point, four strokes with two holes to go. Yeah, it's 17 and 18, but I mean, all I was going for was a, a three and a three to finish. Um, 17, I rarely go for the birdie. I went for the birdie on that hole after seeing what Johnny did um, because I knew 
he pretty much took himself out of it. But I, I didn't. I felt guilty, um, you know, with that with that position because he worked so hard for that, put himself in great position, and just little little mistakes. It's not like he was, you know, throwing them way out in the water, throwing them short. I mean, they were barely missing. Um, so going into 17, I should have threw that one as well, but just made a mistake, and then Will missing that putt twice. It's just. I don't know, there's a lot of weird things that happen, and it's still, it still, I mean, runs through my head, but it felt like a dream in that instant, you know, or nightmare, however you want to look at it. I just, I wasn't there. Mentally, I wasn't there. Um, but this year, I'll definitely, I'll definitely, I've learned from it, so. Well, it, it takes trials and, uh, you know, obstacles to kind of move to that next level, and I'm sure you've built on it, and uh, I'm sure you'll do great uh, next week. Uh, how about after USDGC? Any any other uh, tournaments coming up you're looking forward to? Or? No more tournaments. Not until next year. Just off-season training. Got a lot going on this winter. Uh, physically, mentally. Um, just training different than I have in the past. Just trying to even bump it up even more. So it'll be it'll be a long winter, but a great winter. You got four world championships now. Yeah. What's it going to take to get five? Uh, stay healthy, keep getting better, keep working harder, um, you know, every year I want to work harder, I want to learn something new, so that's basically the goal every winter, is come out with something new, something, you know, something I'm working on, work on all aspects of my game, so. Have you talked to uh, Ken Clymer after winning uh, four? Is he, is he getting worried? Yeah, he came, I wouldn't say worried, he came up to me afterwards and was saying, uh, you know, someone said, oh, Kenny's coming for you, he's like, you know, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, this kid's doing things that, you know, he's, Nobody knows what I'm capable of. Is basically what he said. So it wouldn't surprise him. Is, is how he put it. He wouldn't be surprised if I ran 12 in a row. He wouldn't be surprised if I won 13. So I mean, hearing that from the champ is pretty good. <laughs> That's awesome. It's awesome to have a teammate that uh, you can you know look up to and and you know strive to surpass. And, uh, hey, best of luck to you with uh, all your future tournaments. And uh, hey, go get them out there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, here with Ed Carroll at the Shamrock Golf Course. Thank you so much for uh, letting us do this event here. I had a wonderful time. Uh, I was amazed how far they could throw it and the control they had, so I loved it. Uh, had you ever heard of disc golf before this? No, no. So uh, I played golf all my life. I grew up as a kid uh, across the street from this course here. Matter of fact, uh, Steve Walker was the boy that I grew up with. He played with Lanny Watkins and Curtis Strange at Wake Forest. Uh, so I've been around golf all my life, but uh, this guy, for somebody to manually throw something to 200 yards is unheard of, so I loved it. It, it was great. When you played uh, golf growing up, did you have any favorites? Tom Watson was one of my favorites. I liked Tom because he was never out of it. If he had a bad shot, he could figure out a way to get it in the hole. You guys had the full 18 holes out here, right? We do. We have an 18-hole course. This course was built back in uh, 1957. It stood the test of time. Somebody that likes a tight golf course will like this. Somebody that likes to uh, just kill the ball and, and uh, can't control it is going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a little, so, little more technical. It requires some control, huh? It requires left and right shots and uh, a lot of control. This is the way I made my spending money as a kid. Mr. Walker, he was the owner, he said, you're going to hang around here, you're going to play golf. So uh, I left here, uh, wound up being a fireman for 31 years in Burlington. We had a team that competed in the United States and Canadian Firefighters Tournament. Uh, we won it one year playing against teams like Dallas, Texas, uh, big states, and uh, I feel proud of that. We had a team that could compete with all those guys. Enjoyed it, enjoyed the fire department, but this place closed for 19 months and a group that lived around the course called the Shamrock Alliance started it back and they asked me to run the clubhouse. It was an opportunity, you know, to come back where you grew up. A lot of lessons here though in operating the course and 66 years old, too many hours for me. I resigned once and they said come back and be the golf tournament director and so I said I will do that. I don't mind it a bit, and a good friend of mine, Billy White, is the manager. We worked really well together. This disc golf tournament was, I didn't know what to expect. Paul Macbeth, I, I did not know him from anybody. Uh, nicest guy you're going to ever meet. And uh, I was amazed at the, at the talent and the ability they had with uh, disc golf. A great bunch came down, and I really enjoyed having y'all, so well, please come back. Really appreciate you. Looking forward to next year. I am. All right. Well, hey, we'll see you then. Uh, thank you very much.